Hello, I'm Kelsey Paul, Manager of Interpretation and Engagement at the Frick Pittsburgh. Today we're going to be taking a guided site walk, stopping along the way to hear some stories about some of our buildings and our site in general. The Frick Pittsburgh started more than 100 years ago as a residential neighborhood. Uh, it was the home of Henry Clay Frick and his family from 1882 until 1905. It took more than 50 years to transform this place into a public museum, which it is today. Uh, we have more than five and a half acres of grounds here, three museums, a historic greenhouse, a visitor center, and a cafe, and we're going to explore that all today. Right now, I'm standing in front of the Grable Visitor Center, which was built in 2014 and is one of our newest buildings on site. Today, you can stop in the Visitor Center for a quick refreshment, to peruse our collection of books, or to do a little shopping. The Playhouse was built in 1897 exclusively for the use of the Frick children. Helen Frick had a playroom on the first floor for her dolls, Childs Frick had a darkroom upstairs for his amateur photography, and the most interesting feature of the building is the bowling alley, which jutted off of the back of the building and was fully functional for the Frick children's use. Today, the Playhouse is not open to the public as it's used for offices, but you're welcome to enjoy a nice afternoon on the porch in one of the rocking chairs. The Frick's Cafe was originally the garage for the building that is behind it, which we call Haller House, named after the last private owner, Henry Haller. The home was built in 1910 by Carl Bornschweiger, who grew up right next door in a home that no longer stands. The family knew the Fricks very well. His father, Henry, worked for Mr. Frick at Carnegie Steel. The Borntragers and the Fricks are exemplary of the types of families that lived in this neighborhood in the late 19th century. Downtown Pittsburgh was dirty, grimy, smoky, which meant that those who could moved out into the suburbs, like the East End, where there was more clean air, more space, and a more beautiful space to raise your children. The Frick Greenhouse was also built in 1897, replacing an older greenhouse that was originally off the back of Clayton. This greenhouse is partially reconstructed and functions much as it did when the Fricks used it in the late 19th century. Having a greenhouse or conservatory was common for wealthy Americans during that time, and the Fricks, like their contemporaries, opened their greenhouse yearly for public flower shows. We're standing at the rear entrance to Clayton, the Frick family home from 1882 to 1905. Mr. and Mrs. Frick purchased this home as newlyweds and soon expanded it to accommodate their growing family that would include four children. After 1905, Mr. and Mrs. Frick relocated full-time to New York City but never sold the house and the house remained in private hands for the rest of its time as a private residence. Helen Clay Frick returned to Clayton often as an adult and spent her final years here. It was Helen who chose to preserve Clayton as a museum and after a extensive restoration, it opened in 1990. The Frick Art Museum opened in 1970 to house the personal art collection of Helen Clay Frick and portions of her father's art collection. Today, the museum also features rotating special exhibitions from around the world. The Car and Carriage Museum began as just a carriage museum, founded by Helen Clay Frick in the 1950s to house the Frick family carriages. Later, it was expanded to include early automobiles, and in 2015, the building was renovated again to include a state-of-the-art education center, which now serves thousands of students every year. We hope you enjoyed this guided exploration of the Frick's grounds. On behalf of everyone here at the Frick Pittsburgh, thank you for coming. We hope you have a wonderful visit.